Hi there, I'm Dr. Natalie Bittiture, and today I'm excited to get the opportunity to speak to you. It's my goal to support and encourage African women in any way that I can. I want to make sure you unlock your truest potential. You have the career growth that you want and that you have the business growth that you want, that you achieve your goals and make all your dreams come true. I'm here to support you. If you're an African woman feeling frustrated, confused, overwhelmed, lost, but you know that life has more in store for you and then not ready to give up on your dreams, then this is the right place for you. If you're feeling like this, you are in the right spot. If this is you, hold up. Tell me in the chat. What's your name? Where are you? Where are you from? Write it there so we can see. I want to see. I want to hear. I want to know you. I'm Dr. Natalie Bittiture. I'm a Ugandan woman, Forbes 30 under 30 entrepreneur, chief of staff of the Simba Group, and I'm here to serve you. Five years ago, I was thrust into a leadership position when I launched Musana Karts, my company, and it changed my life forever. A year later, I became the chief of staff of my family business as well. And that made me involved in a large corporation across several different sectors. What I want to do for you is to summarize and translate all the information, training and mentorship and opportunities I've been afforded in an easy and concise way. Sounds good? Let's get on with it. If you're ready, give me a hashtag journey. Hashtag I'm ready in the chat. First off, I'm already proud of you for registering for this webinar. You've taken the brave first step to action. This says you're ready to make changes in your life. You're ready to unlock your potential. Well done, my sister. I feel you, I thank you, and I will do all that I can to support you. Here is my promise to you. If you can commit to coming on this journey with me, I will do all I can to unlock the potential within you. That confident, strong, beautiful African woman is trapped inside of you and she wants to come out. I know she exists. You know she exists. I know you can feel her too. I know that you want her to come out, to take over and to change your life forever. She has the power to do that. And you know she's in there. She is the best version of you. Happy, healthy, whole. She is enough. She is smart enough. She is strong enough. She is good enough. Let me show you how to get her out. She is trapped inside of you and needs a pathway to be unleashed. I had to figure out how to do it for myself with the help of mentors, guides, programs. So let me show you. Let me make a little roadmap. I've taken many women through this process, but this is the first time I'm sharing the secrets. Step by step. How to help you to turn left and right. When to go up and down. Until she's free. How to avoid the distractions and obstacles. How to break the barriers. How to keep moving forward in your path to success. You can do it. Doesn't matter how old you are or how much money you have or what level of education you have or what job you have. It's all about a woman's determination. I will hold your hand and I will lead you to a fully empowered you. This is all I'm asking of you today. So leave behind your excuses, your judgments and all your haters for the next 30 minutes. That's all I'm saying. Give, let me give you what I've learned from the best of the best for this short period of time and you get a taste of what we need to do. So I want to drive straight in, yeah? No more waiting for the perfect time. Let's get started. First, I need you to understand what you're working with. The brain that you have in this body of yours. Our brains have a fear response that was designed to protect us. When you think about when we were living in caves, if you were threatened by an animal or a natural disaster, your brain had to protect you from eating the wrong things, from being in the wrong place, from doing the wrong things, to manage and to live in these small communities. And now that fear trigger is still happening, but it's holding us back. We've become super neurotic instead of being triggered by a lion near us. The fear response is now triggered by our fear of failure, our fear of saying the wrong thing, of rejection, of the wrong post or the wrong business or how things will work out. It's the same response in our bodies and it's holding us back. Because that same physical part of your brain that's designed to stop you from doing something that could hurt you, it's designed to protect you, but now it's protecting you from everything because it's reacting and perceiving all these threats the same way it used to perceive lions. And we don't live in jungles anymore. We're not living in trees and caves and trying to survive. But that part of our brain is still there. And it also has to find something to do. It's still working. It's still trying to keep us safe. And it makes that fear feel real. 
It feels scary. Sometimes you can even think about your dreams and you can start to physically sweat. But what I'm here to tell you is you can conquer it. You can reprogram your brain to overcome any fear that you have. They say growth and comfort don't live together, but this is how they work. Your comfort zone is the things that you are not scared of in the moment. You have a fear and it's out of your comfort zone. But when you conquer it, your comfort zone grows. It expands. You have to get out of the comfort zone to grow. But that's where you feel the fear. And once you face that fear and you move through it, that new activity becomes something you're able to handle, something you're conquered. So your brain knows we don't need to be scared of this. We've dealt with it before. We know what to do. So now you become comfortable with it. That means your comfort zone has expanded. Growth and fear work together because you need to face the fear to grow. Growth and comfort don't live together. You get out of the comfort zone, you face the fear, you expand the comfort zone. I have found this is deliverance. Because when you believe in something until it becomes a reality, that is how you change your life. If you visualize a goal or a dream in a very specific way, you see it and you feel it. You can hold on to that feeling as you face the fear. That's what helps you to drive the growth. What is going to help you to move through that fear? The only way for us to change and reprogram our minds is through strong emotions. When you are a child, your mind is designed to be growing and learning every day. But you've noticed kids are not as scared as us. They're happy to touch fire, jump off this, try this food, see what happens because they don't have that fear. But when you've been touching this fire and having all these issues, your brain learns. Next time we don't do that. That's how you make that comfort zone. So when I tell you as an adult, you have all these long lists of things that previously hurt you or you were embarrassed or you were scared. So now your body is always trying to protect you. Your brain doesn't want you to ever feel those things again because it knows that's bad. But it overprotects you because sometimes you have to feel that fear and face the thing and see how it works out. There's always the chance it will work out and be great. But your body doesn't want to take that chance because there's a chance you'll get hurt. So we have to learn how to override that fear. So you have to hold on to that deliverance, that dream. And that's what drives through the fear. It has to be worth it to you so that you know this is what success could feel like. And that is worth taking the risk, taking the leap forward so that you don't feel the fear. So you're not stuck in your comfort zone. Then you make these small decisions and face these fears every day. And you get better and better at tackling the fear that's holding you back. And that's how you turn your dreams into a reality. You have to have the vision and the execution. You have to let out this wonderful woman inside you. Ah, she's not full of fear. She's just pure success, achievement, joy. That's where I want to take you. So, first, let's have a dream, right? First, let's start with a dream. Think about yourself five years from now. Close your eyes. Imagine it. We're going to go through this. I want you to write these things down. Let's go through the exercise. Think it, feel it, and then we'll pause and you can write it all out. Five years from today, how old will you be? Hmm? Where will you be in the morning? Let's imagine that the sun is rising. You can hear the chickens making noise. You hear the birds chirping. Where are you waking up? Take a moment. Feel it wake up. Where are you? Are you in an apartment? Are you in a house? Are you in the city? Are you in a rural area? Where are you? Who are you with? Who's the first person you say good morning to? I want you to watch yourself go through this day and feel it. Enter that version of you just for a moment. Anything is possible. This is your dream. Are you getting dressed? What are you wearing? How do the clothes feel? How do you feel? What do you have for breakfast? Have you remembered to brush your teeth? Are you going to walk? Where are you going? What time is it? What's your work? worry about how much it costs or how you'll get there or how hard it's going to be to build it just enjoy it let's just enjoy it let's be in this moment but on our way to work how are we going to work what are we seeing what are we smelling what are we noticing we get to work 
What are we doing? What's the kind of work that you do? Where do you sit? Do you have an office? Do you work outdoors? Do you have a shop? Do you work on a computer? Do you go into the field? Where is your work? What kind of work are you doing? Think about these details. How would you spend your perfect day five years from now? This is a good day. It's a day you're enjoying. It's a day that's just running smoothly. Do you stop for lunch? What do you eat? Who do you have lunch with? Where do you have lunch? What's the weather like? What do you do after lunch? Where do you go? What do you do? What time do you finish working? What are your after work activities? Let's go through the whole day. Small details, sweet details. Do you go back home where you woke up? Do you watch TV? Do you check your emails? Do you exercise? Do you go hang out with friends? Are you going to go dancing or watch a movie? Are you going to read a book? What are you doing with your evening? Who do you have dinner with? What do you eat? What does it taste like? What's your bedtime routine? Have you thought about your skincare? Did you drink enough water today? Have you remembered to say a prayer? How do you want to feel on this day? Let's see it. Let's smell it. Let's taste it. How does it feel in your body? What made you smile that day? What made you laugh? What challenged you? What kind of day was this? What was the highlight of the day? You have this dream, you feel it, write it down. I hope it was sweet. I hope you feel ready. I hope you want it. Now we just have to break down the dream. This is where the work starts. We've got the vision, now we look at the execution. Are you happy with the dream? Is that a sweet, sweet day? You see the joy, the achievement, the success, you feel what that day was like. This is what deliverance is all about. You know it. You know it's possible. You can touch it. You can taste it. You can feel it. You can see it. You can see yourself living that day. That's the real you. So how do we get there? Let's break it down into small, small pieces so we can take small, small steps moving in that direction. We don't have to know exactly how we're going to get there. We just have to start walking, right? It doesn't have to add up perfectly. I did this, I made this money, then I married this person, then I ticked this box and I got there. No. We don't know how we're gonna get there, but we're gonna get there. We're going to break it down. We're going to start moving. Start walking in the right direction. In the direction. You see the mountain? You know what's at the top of the mountain? That's where you're going. Just keep moving. Don't think about how big the mountain is. So for each goal, we're going to assess and break them down. We're going to start with four goals. Mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. These are the four levels we're going to operate on, okay? Then let's try emotionally. Are you loved? Are you loving? Are you respected? Are you caring? Are you cared for? How about physically? Are you agile? Are you fit? Are you healthy? Are you flexible? Are you nimble? Are you strong? Are you able? Spiritually, are you humble? Are you graceful? Are you peaceful? Are you faithful? Find the words that are describing this you in five years. Who are you? 
mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Write it down. Who is this amazing you? Who is this woman in five years? I want to hear about it. I want to know who she is. I want you to feel who she is. I am. Write those statements down. You don't have to feel confident in it right now. But you want to be confident. In the five years, you will be confident in this I am statement. You can say I am proudly. This is what's going to make you that woman in five years. Let's relate it mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. What's one step you can take today? Just one. Choose one out of all the four levels. What's a small task you can do today that future you will thank you for? Are you going to read an article in the newspaper today that would help you to become mentally a well-read person? Are you going to sign up for the gym? Become a fit person? Are you going to stretch before you go to bed tonight to help you to become a more flexible person? Think about that future you, that I am statement. Think of a very, very small thing that does not take your time and effort and is very difficult for you today. Something that can help you to become that person. Are you going to finally call your mom back? Well, thank your spouse for something they did nice for you. What can you do today that's a small thing that will let you know that you are committed to unlocking this amazing woman within you? I want you to write it down. What is the task I can do today? A small thing. It should not take a lot of effort and time and energy. It should not cost you anything so that we can start to build. So to get there in those five years, we need to assess what is achievable in the next one year. You see this vision execution? We're breaking it down. We need to write down SMART goals. Now, SMART goals are different from these dreams and different from the statements because a SMART goal needs to be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. So for our one-year goals, we are going to write one goal for each of the levels, mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. A SMART goal. What can we achieve? What is achievable within this one year, attainable, so that you feel like you've made some progress? If your physical goal is, I want to be healthy and fit in the five years, what is doable in the next one year? Can you say, I want to run a marathon by November? That's a nice specific goal, you know, it has a time. November, you can count how many months, how far you have, how fit you are. You need to be specific. You need to be relevant. It needs to be attainable. So you have to make sure, are you someone who can run a marathon? How fit are you right now? Have you run a half marathon? Are you going to be able to do it by November? These are the things you need to assess. So write down a couple of goals and then do the smart check. Check. If they are specific, they are measurable, they are attainable, relevant, and time-based. Do you want to be able to swim 100 meters by July next year? That is part of your goals. So think about each area and see how you break down a goal. So take something like, I want to be able to swim 100 meters, and now do the SMART test. Or I want to read 50 books in the next one year. 50 books about what? What kind of books? How are you going to read these 50 books? I want to read 50 books about starting a decoration business in the next one year. Is that specific? Is that measurable? Is that attainable? Is it relevant? I want to read one book a week on the topic of starting a decoration business so that by the end of the year, I have read 50 books. That's more measurable. So that every week you can check, did you read a book? Even gives you two weeks of spare in case something happens. Specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. I want to be a more humble and faithful servant in my church in the next one year. That's my spiritual goal. So what does that mean? How do I break it down? How do I make it specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based? My goal is to go to church once a week for the next six months and be per fully present when I'm in church. Write that down. And now check. Does it have everything? Mm, almost. It's not so specific. Which church are you going to go to? What service? What time? Hmm? 
Maybe write that down. I am going to go to the Friday 6 a.m. service at this, this church, this address, every Friday for the next six months. That is going to help me to be a more humble and faithful servant in my faith, in my religion. Make sure these are smart goals. I'm just using these as examples. One year goal. People really overestimate what they can do in a year, but they underestimate what they can do in 10 years. So you need to try and find a balance. Don't dream of something that's so huge running a marathon when you can't even run up the stairs. But do something that is reasonable but stretches you. It's a bit difficult. Something that you can't just do anyhow. If you're someone who already reads one book a week, reading 50 books in a year is not a challenge. So that's not a good goal. Find your balance. So our goal is to become that you in the five years, right? So now we need to set a good goal for the first year that encourages us to continue. So we want to be able to achieve it. Because once you gain the momentum, it will be easier to reach that five years. You'll probably even reach faster if you do this process efficiently. If you do a huge goal that you will not attain, you'll be demotivated and you think things won't work out. So see what is attainable. Hmm? Judge for yourself. Something that's a bit hard, but you know if you push yourself and you are disciplined, you can make it. You can do it. And you'll be proud of yourself when you finish it, when you achieve it. So be realistic and relevant. It's not about shaming yourself. Shame does not work. Don't embarrass yourself. Put yourself under pressure when you know you can't do something. That does not work. Let us use a carrot instead of a stick. Think about how good you feel when you can swim that 100 meters, when you can read a book a week. Think about that person, that version of you. Attach yourself to how great she is and how she feels. And then push yourself to read that book a week. To make sure that you're stretching or working out or you're going to church. Make sure that you are as specific as possible. That you can see how you are going to count yourself to make sure you achieve the goal. That's why you need the deadline of the time based. Because setting a good goal should take a moment. It should take time. Don't think you just do it in two seconds. So write a few different goals, different options, and then adjust them. To make sure you end up with one goal for mental, one for emotional, one for physical, one for spiritual. I promise you, four goals is a lot for someone to achieve in a year if you set them right and you are actually determined in achieving them. If your goal, let's say, to swim 100 meters and you don't know how to swim right now, what does that mean? So you need to break it down, okay? Once you have your one-year goal, let's break it down into three-month goals. So what's the first thing you're going to need to know to learn how to swim? Make a list of tasks now. These are the small tasks we're going to achieve over the first three months. So to make sure we achieve our one-year goal, so we get to the five-year goal. Is there a swimming pool near you? First find out. Do you need an instructor? How much is it going to cost? Do you need a swimming costume? Have you got the savings ready? You need to make it regular. So write down all these different things. So that in the next three months, you can see what I need to achieve each month to make sure I'm on target to reach my one-year goal. The measurement part is important. If you say, oh, I'll do reach in three months, I'll be swimming, and you don't track yourself in any way, you won't move. You won't make progress. Book your swimming lessons. Every Tuesday at 2, I will be at the pool. Here is my deposit. Those are the three goals you can have for your first month. You break those down into small tasks. I will buy a swimming costume. I will pay the deposit. I will know exactly which day I'm going. That's all you have to do for the first month. If you've said those are the three things I'm going to do to help me to learn how to swim, that's what I'm going to do. It's in my calendar now. I've blocked it every Tuesday at 2 p.m. for two hours. I will be at the pool for the next three months. The first month, I've organized that. Then you get an accountability buddy. Who are you going to tell about this goal that you're going to achieve in the next three months? I want you to commit to someone in your life, whether it's your friend or your family or your coworker, someone you have to tell. You can tell me, I'm happy to hear and encourage you, but me, I'll check on you often. How is it going? Are you still doing it? Did you go last Tuesday? Make sure you have an accountability buddy, just someone who you can update. I did it, I didn't do it. This week I didn't go swimming, Bananga, I'm sorry this and this happened, but I'm going to go next week, I'm sure. Break it down for the next three months. What are the small tasks you need to achieve? The first month, the second month, the third month. And they should be evolving, not the same task every month. Aha, now I read one book in two weeks. So the next month I can read it in one week. You know? 
put in the dates from today, write down your goals and your three months. See how we've broken it down? Vision, execution. Then we start to move. These small tasks need to be achievable. Not attainable. Attainable is the whole one-year goal that we will reach in the end. We will attain it. We will gain it. These small tasks need to be achievable. So small things that you can tick in the week. This week, what did I do towards my one-month goals? Aha, uh -huh, I ticked them. If I'm going to be reading these books, what kind of books am I going to read? Where am I going to find these books? Where am I going to buy them? How am I going to get them? How do I decide which book? These are all the small tasks you do in the month. So you can tick. Today I found the bookshop. It has the types of books on the decorating business I'm looking for. Tick. Now, each book costs me $10 in your local currency. Now, how am I going to make a budget for this? So that I have a book a week. That means I have to save $10 per week. That's $40 in a month. Break these things down. Write them down. Think them through. Don't just set a goal and think somehow you'll reach there. Break it down to the smallest thing. Even if you write down Think about what type of book you want or think about how we are going to find a swimming pool because in our area, there's none. Just to schedule that time so you focus on your goal, you give it attention and you figure out how you're going to get there. Then you start to build habits to support you. If you're going to go swimming every Tuesday at 2, it means on Monday night, you have to pack a swimming costume, right? So now that becomes a habit. Put an alarm in your phone. So every Monday at 8 p.m., pack a swimming costume. Until you don't even have to think about it. You don't have to put the alarm. Just do it until it requires no willpower, no extra energy, no extra money. You just have to do it. I just have to pack the costume because on Tuesday I go straight from work. I come for my swimming lesson. These are habits. Habits support you in reaching your goal because you can't keep using your energy and willpower every day to force yourself to do something. When you're tired, when you're sick, when you're busy, when you're stressed, you just won't do it. So habits support you. They are like scaffolding, structure, just to hold you up. If you can put in the habits, it takes away the hard part of things. Then you just get in a rhythm. You don't have to think about it. It's Monday, I'm packing my swimming costume. You just do it. You don't have to be like, mm, do I feel like swimming? My back is hurting. The kids need this. In fact, if in the afternoon tomorrow, we could have done this instead. <laughs> Remove all that hassle. Remove that temptation from yourself. Remove those discussions from yourself. Just make it a habit. Tip, tip, the alarm goes off. I've packed the swimming costume. I'm wearing swimming at two. It just happens. It just is. If you're trying to read every day, put the book by your bed. Do you read in the morning? Do you read at night? Is it right there? If you sleep by 10 o'clock and you want to read for an hour, I have to start sleeping at nine. So let me put an alarm so that by 8.30, I start going to bed. So at nine, I'm in the bed. So I have my one hour to read. Make that a habit. Build that habit. If you want to read in the morning, say, you know what? Let me start reaching the office at 7 so I can reach for read for one hour before I start work. That can become a habit. But it means I have to change my morning routine. I need to get up earlier, make sure I beat the traffic, make sure I'm at my desk by 7 so I can read for one hour properly before people start coming and I have to start doing work. Make that the habit. Adjust your life. If you're easy for It's easy for you to wake up earlier in the morning. Just be quicker in getting to work. Make sure you do that. Make sure you sleep earlier. Plan around it. But make it a habit so that it's easy. You're just a person who reaches office at 7. One day, two days, three days, four days. You get used to it. It takes 21 days to build a habit. Just put in the effort for 21 days and then it just becomes easy. You're reading for one hour every morning. It's just who you are. That's how you achieve a goal. You break it down. The smallest, smallest tasks. No task is too small. You write it and you achieve it and feel good when you tick it. Find out the price of swimming costumes. I don't even know how much. Are they $5? Are they $10? Are they $20? I don't even know. Find out the price of swimming costumes. You write it down. How are you supposed to reach a target if you're not even sure about the details? Break these things down because these small steps are how you climb a mountain. No one climbs a mountain in five big steps. They just jumped. They took hundreds of small steps. No one achieves things. All the stuff that you see people winning awards for, becoming millionaires, having all this success, they didn't just wake up and do it in two days. They did a thousand tiny, 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 tiny things. They made better choices. They had good habits. They built the good habits. They set the goals and achieved them. So plan for these things. Think about it. Break it all down. You're not wasting time. You want to succeed and this will support you in succeeding.
Next, we need to remove the obstacles, right? Because if you could do in all of these things already, you would have done them. If you could swim, if you could run, if you could read, if you could go to church every Friday, we agreed. So we have to remove the obstacles in the way. If you can't go through it or above it or remove it, you go around it, right? Why haven't you already learned how to swim? Or why aren't you already reading once a week or one book a week? What's the problem? Is the problem you're watching a series at night and then you're too tired to wake up early to go to work and read for a moment, for an hour? Is that the problem? How do you handle it? Is the problem that you're so busy doing emails when you get to the office at 7 that you don't have time to read a book that would actually help you for your work? Eh, I've already done emails for one hour, the time is gone. Find out what your obstacles are so you can maneuver around them. What can you do to get around these obstacles? Because this time you're determined. Remember, you're committed. If you really want to watch the series at night and it's something you're not prepared to give up because you do it with your family and it's such nice time, I don't want to have to leave them so I can read. That's okay. Accept that. Know that about yourself. Now look at your schedule and say, where am I finding the time? Where can I fit one hour every day? Is it before I pick kids from school? Is it in the morning? Is it at night? Is it at my lunchtime? Can I go and sit in a corner and eat lunch alone so I can read my book? I can't read in bed because I fall asleep in the bed. So let me find a chair in my room where it's quiet. I can sit and read for one hour a day. Put my book there so I'm ready every day to read. Set yourself up to succeed. It takes preparation to succeed. You don't just fall and read 10 books. You plan it. You prepare. You remove the obstacles. You have an accountability body. That's your support system. This is another step. So set yourself up to succeed. Now that you've painted the picture and you see it, you know it, you feel it, you've broken it down, now you have a starting point. You haven't even started the journey. Sorry, that wasn't the journey. You are now here. If this is a map, you are at the beginning. Now you know where you are so you can figure out where you're going, right? You can't say I want to go here but you don't know where you are on the map. Now you know where you're going, you know where you are, now we can start to plot the journey. You're at the beginning. Once you've gone through this process and you've set your goals, you have your five-year dream, the vision of who you're going to be. You have your one-year goals, mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. And we've broken it down into tasks for the next three months, right? When you can say, right, that means we are at the start. We are ready to go. Now we're ready to build habits, we're ready to build routines, we're ready to learn what will support us and encourage us and help us to achieve our goals. How we're going to stay positive, how we're going to get mentors, how we're going to have a good support system, improve our communications, how we are going to get moving, gain the momentum. We need to build resilience. We need to build positivity. So I want to take you through a six-week journey that's going to get you ready for this longer journey. To get from the beginning to the goal, to the dream. I want to equip you so that you're ready to do this journey. I can't walk the journey for you. If I could, I would, Bambi. But I can't. But the good thing is, I know you can do it. And you can do it better than anyone else. Because that woman inside you, she is ready to do it. She just needs the tools. What are we putting in our bag to go on the journey? Before you go climb the mountain, you have to pack things. Do we need water? Do we need food? Do we need warm clothes? What are we putting in the bag? That's what we're going to work on. Six weeks, equip you, you are ready to go, and you'll be unleashed. This is what I want to support you with. Let me tell you, this is the great thing about momentum and achievement. They go together. The more you achieve, the more you achieve. It's like a snowball effect. It just keeps going. When you're not achieving, you feel stuck because you're not moving. Once you start to tick off, I did this this week, I did this this week, I did this this week, eh, the first month has gone, I've done most of the task, now I'm doing this, now I'm moving, you gain momentum. Doing begets more doing. Once you start to achieve these things, the flow will happen, it will become easier. You build habits, you build routines, you start getting used to conquering your fears and handling your goals and ticking off things on your task list and you'll get faster and faster and more efficient doing it. It's encouraging. Make sure you're telling people, huh? This week I even did this. This week I read the book. I went swimming. I am moving. I'm learning. I'm growing. You will start to feel it. It will start to encourage you and it becomes like fuel. And you just keep going. The goals start ticking themselves. You will not even believe how fast you did it. You'll be swimming. 
you'll be floating, you'll be running, you'll be in church, you'll feel connected, you'll start to achieve these goals and start to feel like that person, feel like that woman that you can be. Even if you feel her just for a moment, she starts to come out a little bit here and there and it's so exciting. When you achieve something, when you feel like you couldn't do it and then you did it. All these years I really wanted to learn how to swim and finally, I've been to my first swimming lesson. Do you know how exciting that is? Do you know how fun that is? This is my friend Nusula. She's a young lady I met only a few times over a year ago. She watched all my videos. She had lots of questions. We met in person, full of energy and commitment. She was ready to go. I did all I could to support Nusula. Now, a year later, she has a new job. She's enrolled for a master's program. She went on her first flight on an airplane. I'm so proud of her. Her life has completely changed just in one year. This is how fast your life can change. You just have to unlock your potential. Just start doing it. Just start taking these small steps. I promise you this formula works on anyone, on any dream, on any goal. Five years ago, no one had ever heard of me. I hadn't achieved anything. I hadn't been in any newspapers. I hadn't won any awards. I was just living my best party life. That was all. Here, there. It's what I had. And then I fell and I broke my arm. And I was stuck for two months. I couldn't bathe myself. I couldn't feed myself. I couldn't tie my own hair up. And the experience really humbled me. It slowed me down. I was so helpless. And it made me feel like it was a metaphor for my life. I was so stuck. I had to stop and reflect and say, I don't want to feel this helpless. I know I'm capable of so much more. I can do more. I can be more. I had finished university and I'd been working for about a year. Three months here, four months there. Boring, frustrating, annoying jobs that I didn't like. I wasn't getting anything done. But being stuck there and knowing that I had this person within me who wanted to come out. She was ready to go. She had all this energy. But I didn't know how to release her, how to get her to help me achieve things. So I had to start doing some research. So that I never felt like that. I don't want to feel like that again. I was determined, I committed in that moment to myself saying, I can be someone who can handle their life, who can live their most, live up to their potential, to live their best life. It was a meta metaphor. I didn't want to be a helpless passenger because I knew that there was something more out there for me. So I wanted to be able to get things done. And as soon as I took off the cast on my arm and I was able to start moving and doing things, I said, enough is enough. It's time to get moving. I got my first mentor. We started a business together. This was 2014. And that's when Believerance was born. You know, you can't find that word in the dictionary. I made it up with my friends at a party. Because we realized when you hold on to a dream and you believe in it with conviction, then you just start acting. Say, we just will keep going. We try. Go on hope and faith. God will make a plan. There will be a way. But we know the dream we're trying to get to. That's Believerance. I, could start, I started to hear this woman inside me saying, no, we are still moving. This is what we're going to do. You just get up and try. We'll get there somehow. Just take a few small steps. You can't do a leap. You can't say one day I'm just going to wake up and get this job and everything will change. But there's also no need to be frustrated and broke and hopeless. It's such a waste. You can find the courage within you to start something and start with what you have. Start with where you are. With whatever money you have, whatever body you have, whatever ability you currently have, you have the power to better your own life. No one is coming to rescue you. No one is just going to hand you money for the rest of your life. You can get into the action. You can dive into business. You can dive into your career. You can be proactive and energetic. Have your goals. Achieve them. Grow. Learn. Move. I got my mentor in 2014. In 2015, I went to do a master's. In 2016, I started Mosana Carts. In 2017, became the chief of staff at Simba Group. In 2018, I launched Project 500K. We opened Sky's Hotel. 2019, I won an award from World Economic Forum, from World Bank, from Forbes. I won the Young Achievers Award in Uganda. Life just started happening. Things just start to move. Once you start to tick, you tick, tick, tick. You just start going. Before you know it, it was 2020. And my university that I struggled with in the first time gave me an honorary doctorate at 30. So now I want to make sure that other African women get the support and mentorship and the confidence 
to launch their own lives. Because I am grateful that I was blessed with that support. I found the confidence and I charted my path. So stop wasting time. You can do this. And I'm here to give you this course, to give you a community, to be your coach, to make sure you achieve your potential. If I could figure this out from the kind of person I was, honestly, you can also. Anyone can do it. I can do it. You can do it. And so quickly, it's shocking. Once you figure out the formula, you just keep going. You get things done. I broke it down and I figured out how to make it work for me. And I learned from so many people along the way. I'm so grateful. I got to learn from professors or from YouTube, from classes or from Tony Robbins, from conferences, from trainings, from experience, from my work, from starting companies, from being in a big company. So I want to break it all down for you and summarize it so that you have the principles and it's easy for you to figure out your formula, how you can move from where you are to your dream. I understand the level of privilege that I was given and I know that it was not for no reason. We should not all have to pay in school fees and in mentorship and in trainings and in conferences, in our time, in our money, in our energy, to take the longest route possible to figure things out, to get the knowledge and the support that you need to succeed. So as African women, I know that that knowledge is not afforded to us easily. No one wants us in these rooms or offers it to us easily. Even I have had to fight for it and put myself there. So I want to give it to you in an easy way, in a simple way. You have so much potential. We can achieve so much. We just have to release our own inner power. Let me help you do that. Now that you know my story, let it become our story. Why me? Why us? Why now? This is our time to rise as African women. Let us support each other. Let us grow each other. Let us make sure we move on our journeys. I believe I've met enough women over the last five years to understand the different challenges that different African women are facing. At least get a glimpse to see how I can support. I see challenges in confidence, in our access to capital, in our access to mentorship. So these are the gaps that I want to try and bridge to do what I can to make sure that African women have the support that they need, to make sure that you succeed. So if this sounds good to you, come on this journey with me. Come on this journey with us. We're now a group of strong women who are all determined to keep moving, to encourage each other, support each other, share knowledge, share insight. Sign up now. Let's go. Let's do this. I believe in you. And I believe that you can unleash the power within you. And look at this amazing woman. Let her out. Get used to having her out. Get used to her running the show. I promise you, your life can change. Let's do this.